So uh, we are going to open this up to Q&A. Um, can, we, can we have some lights in the house a little bit so we can see you guys? Um, good. Um, if anyone has any questions for Francesca, please raise your hand and uh, just uh, do us a favor and try to speak as loudly as possible because it's a big it's a big room. Thanks. So, anyone? Sure, right here. Really beautiful film. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> sure, lady in the middle. That is nice. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you. Um, the question was, what was her inspiration for making the film? Well, <laughs> it's a bit dark in here, as you may have been able to tell. Um, I think, you know, I think as a filmmaker, as an artist, I think you, you try to sort of exercise your demons, or I do anyways, otherwise my therapy bill would be quite high. So, um, yeah, I mean, basically, I think for, you know, the character of Linda, I was on the fertility track for about eight years unsuccessfully, so... Um, that was quite a, a dark path um, to travel. And I think um, I sort of took a scenario which was even worse than what mine was, which was just the inability to have a kid. And I was like, well, what would be worse would be to have one and lose it. So that's sort of the birth of Linda. And I'm always curious in sort of humans' abilities to cope or not cope with things. And denial is a good one. Delusion is an even better one. <laughs> Um, so that was her, and um, and with Kaya's character of Emmanuel, um, I was raised in an alcoholic home, so sort of secrets and carrying sort of adult secrets was sort of part of the fair, um, and sort of just abandonment in general. As a kid, my mom was an actress, so she'd go off for you know months on end, and even though she was coming back, I think as a kid, like the minute your mom leaves your side, even for like you know an hour, it's like panic stations. Um, so, yeah, so I sort of put those, both those demons, um, my biggest ones from my childhood and sort of my adulthood, um, even though I still don't consider myself an adult, um, in one movie and let them sort of work it out, and, and now I'm all better, as you can see, <laughs> the picture of health. <laughs> um, so, sorry for the long-winded answer, but that's, that's the truth of it. <laughs> um, speaking of the truth... I've been meaning to ask you um, if you want to talk about the significance of the word fishes in your title. <laughs> I, I, I have know. an idea, but I don't, you know. Well, I, don't I don't know if there is a, like, a significance okay. per se. I don't know. I just, the title came to me, and, um, and I'm, I'm half Italian, so I'm quite superstitious. So whatever comes <laughs> sticks, including the, the, you know, Emmanuel's name as a boy. And then I was like, oh, fuck, now what am I going to do? So I had to, like come up with a reason for it in the movie because I was unwilling to add an LE to the end of her name because that's not how I wrote it. Um, but, you know, I think the, the truth about fishes, as it were, is just that they, you know, they take you from this side of things to the other and that's why they travel in packs because we're big and they're small. It takes a lot of them. So, I don't know if that ruins it for you, but... <laughs> no, it's good. But I'm a Pisces. Anything about this? I'm a Pisces uh, rising, all right, so all right. we have it. <laughs> We both have the curse. <laughs> That's true. We'll go both ways. Uh, hi, what can I do for you? How did you pick the cast? Did you have those actors specifically in mind? Um, the, the question was, how did she get the cast she got? Um, I didn't actually. I um, I did a film before this um, with my best friend, Tatiana von Furstenberg. We did a film called Tanner Hall. And we discovered Rooney Mara and cast her in that film. And then um, I became very close friends with her in the making of that film. And... When that was over, we were both out of a job. Um, and so I was like, right, I'll write you your next job. This way you'll have a job, I'll have a job, and we'll all be happy. And, um, and it was great, because I did write it for her, and we did collaborate on it, and she was one of the co-producers on the film. But by the time I got the funding uh, together for it, um, three years had passed, because it's not, it's not easy to get money for an indie film, especially like a female-driven film about like loss and redemption, when you're trying to sell that, people are looking at you like, no. <laughs> I'm not putting money in that movie. Uh, next time I'm going to say, there's explosions and tits and it's fabulous. <laughs> um, and then just sort of make a different movie anyways. Uh, but yeah, so, um, so I'd written it for her. And then by the time it was good to go, she was too old to play a teenager. 
which in the end was sort of a blessing in disguise because I got to find Kaya, who's amazing. And, you know, and in the end, you end up making the movie you were supposed to make with the people that were supposed to be in it. And um, Jessica Biel read the script and sort of came after it. And um, I wasn't sure she was the right person because I'd never seen her, you know, do this kind of work. Um, but we met. She said she wanted to audition. I was like, that's pretty ballsy. Um, you know what I mean? An actor of her caliber, and she really doesn't need the work, uh, certainly doesn't need the two dollars I'm going to be paying. Um, but she really wanted the part, and I think she did a stellar job. I think this is, you know, probably her best work to date, so I'm really excited for audiences to sort of discover what she's capable of. She got two dollars. She did most get two dollars. <laughs> so that's pretty and, uh, <laughs> and I just have to give a shout out to Alfred, because um, he came on the script really early on, and as the movie came together and fell apart, he sort of stuck with it, and he's like, I'm doing this movie, I, I don't care who you cast or what happens, so, you know, yeah. Anyone else? Uh, sure, back there. Um, thank you. Um, I think like I think the key, if you're writing a script, is that you you know where it's going to go. <laughs> so I've made that mistake before. I'm just like off and running to the races and writing, and then I've just like run out of steam, and then I've got no script, and I've just spent months doing nothing. So no, I definitely knew how it was going to end, but in reality, um, there was they talked at the end at the grave there as the camera was pulling up, um, but there was. Um, it was supposed to end with this like light rain, sort of, sort of, a call back to the water imagery. But the crane, the water operator guy that we hired was really not great, and um, and it was really late at night. It was like four in the morning by the time we got to there, and it was even though we we're shooting in LA, it was really cold, and we had stand-ins, and I was like, can we practice this like rain thing on the stand-ins? And everyone just thought I was so evil to to want to do that to them, and I was just like, but it's our final shot, and. Anyways, I got talked out of doing that, so we used them. And when the light sprinkling of the rain is supposed to happen while they're having their final conversation, it just poured on them. Like, it was like, you know, like a fire hose. Like, and they were like wailing around. It was like muddy. And so anyway, so we had to scrap that ending. So that pull-up is really our test shot. Like, we were just like, well, let's at least test the, the camera thing. And so thank God we had that, because we definitely can't use the the ending, the proper ending. But again, I think it worked out great. Yeah. I mean, so. you can say that, would you still have a survived anyway? No, I'm satisfied. I, I don't even do reshoots, you know what I mean? I just like, I just feel like I get what I get and I make it work and that that's part of the excitement, you know, for me and also because we had no more money to do any more reshoots, so that answers that. But I think because I've been trained and sort of like this is your limited amount of time, and your limited money, I don't even think like, oh, well, I'll just reshoot that. Also, because there's certain magic that's happening in those 27 days that, you know, is just that. I can't imagine going back like two months later and like, you know, asking them or myself to sort of get back in that head frame. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else? It's a little tough to see, so. Um, sure. How did you first get into filmmaking? Yeah, the question was, how did Francesca first get into filmmaking? Well, I'm a very lousy songwriter, and that's really what I was doing. <laughs> I was uh, writing songs, and I had a band, and uh, I was making, like, no money. And I was, like, you know, found myself in alleys haggling over $20, you know, for some show. And I was just like, right, this is not going to end well. <laughs> Um, and so I just, I segued from songwriting into script writing and I, I'm just better at it. You know, the first script I wrote, I ended up selling to HBO and even though they didn't make a, you know, tele-series of it, I figured like, still, I still feel this is a better sign than, <laughs> than the road I was traveling. So I was like, right, I'm going to like try to stick to this. And for me, it's just always been about telling stories because it's, it's very cathartic for me and it's just good fun. I can't believe I actually get to do this. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I, 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 I
so um, yeah, so I just, I was always a writer. I was just like writing three minute things and now I'm writing an hour and a half piece of business. Um, I have a question for, about Kaya because she's so fantastic and yeah. such a discovery, which is, you know, one of the Well, discovery to us. I think these folks know her from Skins, probably. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, she did a, a tally series here that was, like, wildly popular with the, with the young folk. Oh, wow. Um, but That's I didn't awesome. know about it either because when she sort of, her name floated up, I looked her up on the internet and I just saw, like, little clips of her Skins madness. Oh, cool. We grew up. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, wow. That's awesome. Um, sure. Is Jeremy here? Uh, what's next for you? What, what are you working on now? Looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone has a script. Um, no, honestly, because the last two I, I wrote and produced and directed, I'm really tired. <laughs> I really need a nap. So um, I'm thinking that I want to just be hired to, to direct someone else's script. I don't want to deal with the raising of the money or you know singing and dancing for it. Um, I don't want to be producing the bugger. I just want to like direct the actor, like cast them, direct them, you know, find the locations, and, and that's going to be enough for the next round, I think. So, and also because I'm going to get a paycheck, like a real paycheck. Because when you write the thing, right, and then you're like, and I'm going to direct it as well, then the, the, the investors are like, oh, but you get to make your movie. Like that's, like that's the paycheck, is that you get to work for three years for nothing, <laughs> like somehow that's that's how it is, right? I mean, it's like it's, yeah. you know your good fortune. So I'd like to actually get paid. So that's 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 the plan. I know it sounds like I'm selling out, but <laughs> after no. two films like getting, this, I'm just like, all right. Getting paid is awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say that it was um, one of the extraordinary films where I've seen differences in people validated. Oh, thank you so much. And I think I think the silence at the end is good too. Like again, it's those, you know, mistakes that sort of work in your favor because there's nothing really that needs to be said. I think like you just sort of need to sit with them and it and you know. But I do. I mean, I, and I think you know, I, I'm I'm hopeful that the message of the film is hope. You know, and sort of as far out there as you are, there's probably somebody that can see you and somebody that can help because I think that is the truth and. You know, and that in the end, you know, none of us can save ourselves, but in saving another, we kind of end up saving ourselves. And I think that's sort of one of the beautiful things about, you know, being a human creature. Um, Say it again. Please don't stop writing. Oh, uh, no, I won't. <laughs> uh, thank you. I know, right? Well, I grew up in England my whole teenage period, like from. Yeah. 11 to 18, so if, if she was like extra surly.